eyes on the end of Title 42 as it is set to sunset here in just a couple hours. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Wale Aliu. Adam McCusin is live in the ABC 10 News Studio with those head with some of our local headlines and I'm here at the border wall leading our team coverage and here is that border wall right behind me some new numbers we got tonight saying that there are more than 1900 people on the other side of this fence here in San Diego County title 42 expires at 8:59 local time after three years it allows asylum seekers to be expelled for public health reasons during the pandemic now there has been an influx of migrants at our border growing as we get closer to title 42's end we have shared their stories with you all week long they are here in search of a better life they are tired after braving long journeys to get here they are hungry some eating leaves leaves to sustain themselves they are desperate for help when I was here earlier this week many of them asked our crews to help charge their phones so they could connect to the world and the asylum process this surge in migrants is only expected to increase once title 42 ends all right right now i want to bring in abc 10 news reporter austin gravish austin like myself you have been out here much of this week and you're seeing just the sad conditions some of these people are in and a lot of desperate faces i was just talking to a family from india and they have come with another family from india here and the situation here is getting a lot of attention from nonprofits. in fact the international rescue committee is going to be sending uh, resources here to the border they're worried about the situation here as are a lot of nonprofit groups they tell me that a lot of migrants are actually being misled into thinking now is the time to coming into america i was talking to someone yesterday in tj and he said there are videos going around on TikTok and Facebook about that and migrants are being misled thinking they should be coming here when really now may not be the time for them to be coming here and so that International Rescue Committee says it is going to be sending resources here connecting people with um, lawyers and and making sure they're aware of their rights and I want you now to be able to take a listen to Maria Silva she is with the group here in San Diego and she tells me what the IRC is doing to help the asylum seekers here we are scaling up our ability to provide assistance to arriving asylum seekers. I think the bottom line is to remember that people in need of protection are exercising their legal right to seek asylum under federal and international law. We know that an increased number of arrivals is likely to happen, and we know that they can be welcomed safely and orderly and humanely if we invest the right amount of resources. And the wait for asylum seekers to get into processing isn't clear, Wale. As you said, the numbers here are just absolutely staggering. I am told the processing centers in San Diego are now full. Yeah. So, you know, how many more days people will be here for is really not clear. Some people here today, I was told, have been here for seven days. Others have been here just a matter of hours. Some weeks, so some of the numbers we've been reporting are 125% full. So they're not just full. It's just they're staggering. Overcrowded. It's yeah. staggering. Austin, thank you so much. Uh, as we've mentioned, a lot of these people are, are being asked by CBP to use the CBP-1 app in order to be able to go through the asylum process. But as we've been mentioning, their phones are dead. They can't get a charge on their phone. That's why they're begging us, the media who's here at the border, to help them charge their phones. Not only that, but they're also having glitches on the app. For more on that, let's get to ABC 10 News reporter Michael Chen. This is the app asylum seekers are being directed to for appointments and a chance to seek asylum. Anna, a Mexican citizen staying in Tijuana, is seeking political asylum. The mom of three says she downloaded the app two months ago, submitted a photo of her family, and has been presented with a few appointment times, but has never gotten one. It asks you to take another photo to confirm an appointment. But when I try, I get an error message. It's so frustrating. Anna says she spent hours every day using the app. The one time she was was able to take a photo, nothing happened when she hit submit. I feel desperate and hopeless. I try, and it never works. Anna's experience echoing complaints about app glitches from migrants gathering at the border. Immigration attorney Nanya Thompson is representing Anna. If you can't get that appointment, how can you comply with the policies created by the administration? It's almost like they're forcing your hand to take other actions, desperate measures. In the past few days, the CBP has announced upgrades to the app, including more appointment times. On Thursday morning, Anna tried again. She says there was an app update which was followed by a frozen screen. Her attorney advising her to keep trying and not to appear at the border. I hope the app begins working. I just want a new life for my family to be safe. Michael Chen, ABC 10 News.
Yeah, and Anna says that she's been trying to reach someone from CBP, but she says when she tries the number, she can't even get a hold of anyone. All right, take a look at this video. Some migrants have already been released to shelters in San Diego County, like this one in the Mission Valley area. The state has asked us not to say where this is specifically because of security reasons, while tenants are, white tents are set up to help intake the hundreds of migrants who have been arriving in large vans all day. The state says yesterday between its three shelters, two in San Diego, it saw its busiest day ever with 1,100, 1,100 people being dropped off. Today is expected to be busier than even busier. Now, some of those migrants have already been released with court dates as far out as a year and a half from now. Now, we have seen many San Diegans come to the border to help these migrants with basic needs like food and water, and uh, as I've been mentioning, getting their cell phones charged. But there are other ways you can help. Here's some video here. A group of local organizations did come together calling on people to donate items. They are asking specifically for basic necessities, including water, sleeping bags, feminine products, and baby items. They are not able to take any food at this time. The hope is to get these items directly to migrants. People on the other side of our border are hurting just as much as we're concerned about how bad they'll hurt when they get here. And I think um, the, the call to action here is that we need to meet the needs for those on the other side of the border like we're trying to meet the needs for them when they get here. Now, the group plans to physically cross to the other side of the border to give out these items. Information on where you can donate is on your screen. Now, just as Americans have different viewpoints on this, so do our elected officials. Le local Rep Republican Representative Daryl Issa expressed concern that our immigration system will be overwhelmed with Title 42. And he says this could hurt the binational community of San Diego and Tijuana. You know, San Diego is a place where legal immigration and secure borders, but borders that we can do commerce over, has been great for us. Our relationship uh, with the Tijuana uh, border area and the production on both sides of the border has really helped us prosper on, on both sides of the border. ICE agents and Border Patrol agents are, are dealing with massive amounts of fentanyl and meth coming in. They're dealing with this massive amount of people that they're trying to uh, control. And that takes them away from the normal commerce and, and so on, which, you know, we're the busiest land port anywhere in the world. We reached out to Democratic congressional leaders as well. Representative Scott Peters from District 50 sent us this statement that reads in part, I'm going to read it here, I firmly maintain the view that our border is an opportunity, not a threat. San Diego serves as an example for how to humanely process migrants who look for better lives. During COVID-19, local nonprofits have collaborated to support refugees and asylum seekers as efficiently and quickly as possible. San Diego will continue to work in tandem with local and state governments to alleviate the expected pressure due to this policy change. All right, as I mentioned, 8.59 p.m. tonight. So as Title 42 does come to an, to an end, as it sunsets here in a few hours, let's take a look back and see how we got here. In March 2020, the CDC, under former President Trump, imposed the measure known as Title 42. It was to stop the spread of COVID across U.S. borders. We spoke to Tom Wong, the director of U.S. Immigration Policy Center at UC San Diego, about the decision. The reason why Title 42 was so um, sort of spectacular as a change in U.S. immigration and asylum policy is that Title 42 uh, basically uh, allowed the federal government to circumvent uh, asylum policies that were on the books. The move came with some criticism from immigration advocates who said it was just being used as a political tool to stop undocumented people from coming to the border. President Biden pledged a more humane way to deal with our border, but kept the measure in place once he took office. He renewed Title 42 in August of 2021, saying lifting the policy would exacerbate overcrowding at DHS facilities and create public health risks. Moving ahead to April 2022, the CDC said Title 42 is no longer necessary to stop the spread of COVID and announced it would be terminated in May. But 
In May, a judge issued a nationwide injunction barring the administration from lifting it. It comes after two dozen states sued over the plan to end the policy. After a back and forth for several months over whether the policy would stay or go, the Supreme Court agreed to take it up in December 2022. But in January of this year, the U.S. announced it was ending the COVID health emergency on May 11th, which would in turn end Title 42, making the case moot. Some individuals have been waiting for three years in Mexico uh, for their opportunity to request asylum in the United States. San Diego has been preparing for the end of Title 42 for months and taking steps to try and make it a smoother process. Wong says many migrants have family across the U.S. and does not believe San Diego is the region most resettlements will take place. But San Diego is not the final destination for many of these individuals. San Diego is just another uh, sort of point um, uh, along a very arduous journey. And Wong says many local nonprofits will do the heavy lifting as Title 42 comes to an end. They're going to be the ones helping out with travel and other co accommodations. Okay, we are not done here. We're far from it. In fact, coming up on ABC 10 News at 7, we're going to go even more in depth on that CBP app and some of the glitches that we've been seeing. And we're also going to explore the differences and some of the terms you've been hearing, migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, what does it mean and what will they have access to with those specific labels? Adam, we'll send it back to you in the studio for now. Just amazing stories you and the crew have been able to uncover down there. Wale, thanks so much. We'll see you again at 7. And you can get the latest developments on this story at any time on our website, 10news.com, or on our mobile app. There is a free version available in the App Store. In other news tonight, the husband of missing Chula Vista mom, Maya Miliete, back in court today. Coming up, what a judge decided about Larry Miliete's contact with his three children, plus. Which is disgusting and it's horrible to find out and it's almost surreal. A shocking discovery in a local college dorm, why some students say it makes them feel unsafe. And we'll continue warming up into the weekend. It'll start to feel like summer. I'll explain why. That's all coming up in just two minutes. Coming up tonight, break.